everybody. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Blazer Victory Podcast. John Duncan here, and of course, I'm joined as always with my co-hosts Jimmy Marion and Darian Smith. And UAB got it done in New Orleans over Tulane. Uh, the final score was a 78 to 67. Uh, but before we get into recapping that game, this game recap episode and all game recap episodes of the Blazer Victory Podcast are brought to you by Cahaba Brewing Company. And everybody that joined us at Cahaba Sunday, we are so appreciative of all of y'all that showed up last second. I mean, this was a kind of a last second, you know, throw it to throw it together. Let's see who all can come. And a bunch of y'all joined us and we were so appreciative. You know, I don't want to name uh, I could name a bunch of names, but I don't want to leave anybody out that came. But we are just so Jimmy and Darian and I are so appreciative of everybody that came out again last last minute. Uh, to watch Tulane and UAB Sunday and guys this (laughs) this was uh, not planned that both our football and basketball watch parties were going to be against Tulane and thank God that (laughs) the basketball team got uh, got the dub over Tulane or we would have had to ban uh, any future watch parties involving the Tulane Green Wave so uh, but thank thank you guys again Um, you know Cahaba, special shout out to Cahaba for hosting us, you know, another watch party at that um, in the tap room. You know, they they've really been well, you know, this whole football and basketball season. So good to us. And we are so appreciative of Cahaba for sponsoring the podcast. But Darian, what what's just your reaction, you know, from from the watch party before we get into the actual game? I think one important thing is. um, so if anybody is thinking about like bringing their wives or girlfriends or any lady friends, um, kids, it was it's real cool. And they bring you pets. You can bring your pets. Um, but now two drinks, John, you can help me out with the sour. What was that? Oh what? yes, the sour. So they had a the, the sweetheart sour. Oh my goodness, it's and a, the, amazing. And, 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 and what was the lemonade? Oh, the Cahaba Berry Lemonade or something. Yeah, Elizabeth liked that, too. So, you know, and I'm not saying I'm not putting all women in the box here, right? Because I enjoy them as well, right? Because I know some women that can drink, the, you know, whiskeys, rums, they can drink. But if you're just looking for that that light, sweet tasting, like, I drink whatever. I really enjoy both of those. It was the, the sour and... Say say those drinks one more time because I could I just remember sour and one with a lemonade. <laughs> yeah, so the it was the sweetheart sour. Now they also have a cherry hibiscus sour that's really good too. I um, didn't try that one. I got to no, try that. it's good. Um, but it's it, I'm so glad you mentioned that, Darren. You know, because people just think brewery and it's all beer, but they have more than beer. You know, they've got yeah. mixed drinks, exactly. cocktails. Yeah, and I'm so glad. You know, you got the food truck, the current, the uh, current. That, that hey, trunk, man. bro, hey. those nachos, I know the current ain't a sponsor of our podcast, but them nachos you got, I said. Mm. Those nachos, listen, <laughs> my wife and kids enjoy it. I got, I got the loaded nachos. I got the smash burger. I got uh, the ranch cheese fries. Like, I was getting everything just for all my kids. If you don't know, I have a big family, right, and my wife. So I was just getting everything, like, here. We're going to put it all together, and they love everything, like, everything it was the food was good so shout out to the current maybe i would love to have that sponsorship as well. i would love that sponsorship so we need to set something up like you know, hey we're gonna have to talk yeah we're gonna have to talk at the at the end of next month say hey <laughs> hey man we gotta we gotta set that set that up but like i think that was awesome to see right like to see our wives so what i really enjoyed i, I really wish natalie would have been able to come to this one I enjoyed like having our wives, and I think it was your best friend, your high school best friend, John, his wife, mm-hmm. and they was just Jimmy. Like I think after you left, they were just like just sitting there chilling, chatting. I was like, oh wow, like they really developed some here. That I don't think they realize like the game is over, <laughs> right? But to me, that's that's the best part of all of this. Like we do all of this, and we're fans of a team, but it's all about fellowship. So. You know, just a sneak peek behind, like John was kind of worried because we threw it together quick. He's like, man, I don't know if people going to come. You know, oh, I, I was know stressed. Like hey, for our listeners, man, yo, Darren and Jimmy took the brunt of it, but I was stressed out. I was like, you know, we're doing, are we doing this too late? Like, are we, are we, are we going to have enough time for people to show up? You know, because we, what, when did we announce that? Was that 
it was like it, Wednesday. Was it Wednesday? It was like halfway through the week, I think. It, so yeah, it was just one of those things. Like, hey, uh, why not? Like, I remember Jimmy saying, "Yeah, this is like invite the people." Yeah, you know, I remember him saying that if people want to come, they can come invite the people. So, so to me, it was never a thing like the Tulane, the, the football one, when we were looking for a crowd. Mm-hmm. To me, this was like, hey, we're friends. And first, and then the Blazer Pod, and then it's like, hey, if y'all want to come out and be a part of our friendship, that's what I enjoy the most. I enjoy genuine, authentic relationships, right? So, no, we didn't have as many people or half as many people as we had during football season, but it gave us the opportunity to really sit down and actually be fans with other fans, like celebrating with Thomas and talking to Richard and meeting i'm just meeting wives and babies and stuff i enjoy authenticity that is the thing so shout out to all the blazer fans uh that did come out shout out to the ones that weren't able to come and still kept up and show love on social media um we're authentic and i think that's what make us make us unique as blazer fans so next time we'll have something that doesn't matter if it's just last minute or if it's something that we plan um, I think either way, we're going to have good drinks and good food and a good time. So that's what it's all about. Yeah, you guys hit on all of it already. It's a true family affair. We're getting to know uh, each of our listeners each and every time that we go out you know, to one of these events and we have a good time. Thank goodness that we did win. That way we wouldn't feel as if we were cursed. And it's like being reserved. Do we want to throw another watch party? Um, but yeah, we appreciate everybody that came out and, uh, looking forward to many more events to come in the future. Definitely. And again, you know, game wise, UAB was able to get it done 78 to 67 as UAB coast over the two lane green wave. Um, <laughs> there, there were some times during the game that I was thinking like, man, we, 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 we don't need to have watch parties against two lane. Cause this is just, I mean, cause there were times there's like UAB could take a 15, 20 point lead. And then you would see slowly right before halftime two lane, you know, took the lead. Um, but Hey, shout out to yaks again. Y'all know the Blazer victory podcast is the yaks with Linda Borg show. Um, 26 <laughs> points, uh, matches his career high that he just set the week before um also gets what was it 13 boards um another double double for so yeah he had, he had 26 and 13 like it, at any point during that game it didn't seem like all right uh the last game we won what was the game before rice uh we had momentum what was that game there was a rice game i don't, I don't, recall, <laughs> I don't recall that game, game we don't recall that game it was, it was <laughs> north texas wasn't it yeah. yeah, North Texas. So you remember he went on that run in the mm. first half. It was like mm. his his points were kind of loud. During this game, I don't really remember that that Yaks like run. It was kind of like it's impressive to me because it was like a quiet 26. Is this yeah. like the expectation for Yaks now? You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I'm saying. It was early in the year, if Yaks would have dropped 26, he would have been like, ooh, what you know, mm. now it, now it's kind of like 26 it's just your ex. Right. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. like, oh, I didn't even know he dropped 20. It, during watching the game, it seemed like 10. Yeah. I remember watching the game and we were talking about, well, the ex is kind of loose with the ball this game. That goes to show you where he's raised his level of play. Our expectations have risen. Yes. And I think around the around the AAC, his expectations have risen. So shout out to Yex for having us hold him to a higher standard. It's like, yeah, he dropped 26 and 13, <laughs> but he was too loose with the ball. You don't need to be loose with <laughs> Right, no. But I do want to correct myself because I, I know Jimmy was probably about to. He, he had 12 boards, but this was his 13th double-double of the year. So that's where I was getting the 13. But, but yeah, shout out. Hey, Yaks doing Yaks things. Guys, we dominated in the paint again against mm-hmm. Tulane. Um, and, and, you know, you kind of go through the, the waves of the game, uh, no pun intended, playing the green wave. But, you know, they really – UAB really dominated in the paint early on in the first half. And then, Jimmy, I think, you know, we were talking with Brad. Uh, was it right at halftime? And they, like, caught up points in the paint. It, like, Tulane made it really close. But, again, second half, UAB just dominates the paint. And they end up – what was it? Forty outscoring Tulane, forty-four to twenty-six in the paint, and out rebounding the Green Wave, thirty-nine to twenty-four. So just all around, just solid big big man effort. You know whether that was Yaks, uh, JD, 
picked up that flagrant early on though so it was kind of kind of worrisome but just the bigs down low and christian coleman got 10 points too um so just shout out to all the guys uh, for UAB really just dominating inside this two lane team for the second game for, for the second time this season. Yeah, what was wild was uh, to start off the game, I think UAB scored their first 22 points in the paint. And so at one point it was like 22 to eight points in the paint advantage for UAB. And yeah, I think at the half, it might have been like 28 to 16 or 26 to 18. So Tulane had. Uh, somewhat of a run there at the end. So I think UAB was like plus eight in that category in the first half. But then the dominance uh, continued in the second half, finished the game plus 18 points in the paint. Uh, UAB, I thought, did a good job in this game uh, creating and uh, converting on easy opportunities around the basket. So they finished 19 of 25 on dunks and layups. And, you know, in our text thread and in, in some recent games, you know, I would be, hey, we're missing some bunnies. We're missing some bunnies down low. And, you know, but statistically, I think they did a good job at converting on those opportunities around the rim. You mentioned uh, Christian Coleman there in that first half. I thought that he was really the spark uh, that UAB needed in that first half. Ten points and five of six shooting, three boards, two assists in the first half alone. And Darren was talking about uh, Yaks and some of his uh, scoring spurts. Christian Coleman had his first or his own 6-0 scoring run on his own, which I thought was great. And then, yeah, it looks here that uh, UAB finished plus 15 in the boards, and that includes plus 12 in the offensive glass. So this was certainly a good game by the bigs. Um, you know, not just them scoring, but getting each other involved. Uh, so the way that Tulane was playing, AK talked about uh, that it, you know, led to the bigs for UAB having the ball in their hands more for playmaking decisions. Uh, and that also led to a few more turnovers than we're accustomed to. Uh, by our bigs, but it also led to some of those easy uh, shots that were available that, again, UAB was able to convert in this matchup. Yeah, I also think the biggest thing for me was um, just responding. If it's, if it's anything that we have felt susceptible to as a team is we kind of get hit with flurries, right? Um, it's kind of like if you watch boxing at UFC, you, hit, you see guys get hit and, they, and they try, they're trying to regain their composure like a fighter is coming at them so so quick and so fast, they don't have time to like regain their balance, and then bam, they they're out. You know, um, I feel like this team in the past has failed susceptible to that um, against Rice, especially defensively. He never recovered, all because I felt like it was a. First of all, the attendance was horrible. The energy was horrible. The energy with the team was horrible. I can't speak to what the coaching staff's energy was, but I'm just going to assume it was horrible as well because everything was horrible that game, right? Like, Hey, bro, you just got to get that chicken finger and move on. Yeah, you just got to. I think everything was horrible. And um, But what was really disheartening, the competitiveness in that game, the competitive, if, it, if it's anything that, I, if I'm coaching the team, if it's anything that I want before, anything else, you can give me skill, you can give me IQ, all of that. I want competitiveness. Because at the end of the day, I was the type of player, as undersized as I was when I played, I could play in Serbia in front of three people. If it was if it was about me versus you, I was going to win because I was better than you. And that's just, that's all competitors should be, period. And it was very disheartening to see just our, I'm like, our guys competing? Are we just giving up? It's like we got hit with a flurry, especially defensively, and we never responded that game. And as a Blazer fan, I was just like, I'm not watching this because if you're not going to compete, I'm not going to care, right? And so it's great to see the response in this game. We had to be tough because we got hit with a flurry, especially right before half. when We were up, I think, 11 or 12. I remember walking over to like get a drink <laughs> I, it was at least just like a minute and 30 seconds and I turned back around I was like what how are we like tied or we were, you know we were up like one I was like what just happened I walked out for a second I can't tell you what happened but it was a flurry real quick and then so to go into halftime down one after playing so well all the points in the paint and then Butter finally started getting it going from deep so I'm like, oh, man, we're in a good spot. We're playing good defense, right? They can barely score. That was the biggest takeaway was, like, our defense. But sometimes 
I was listening to Jalen Brunson of the New York Knicks. He played at Villanova. I like to listen to like Barry. I like to listen to athletes talk. I just like to get their perspective, NFL or NBA. And um, Jalen Brunson was saying under um, Coach Jay Wright at Villanova, he was like, yeah, everything is good when your shots are falling. But he was like, under Jay Wright at Villanova, they talk. They knew they were going to outdog people. In some games, those shots are not going to fall. But they knew that practice, they knew how they practice. It was always harder than the games. And they knew they were going to outdog people. Okay, if we got to win this way, we'll win this way. We'll just find, we'll draw fouls and play defense. And I feel like for a portion of this game, shots weren't falling. We said, we're going to go to the paint. JD did a good job getting down there. We like, oh, I'll dog you. We're going to make it like a North Texas game, right? We're going to – it was some great big – the big passing going on. It was a couple of passes. I remember us watching. It was like some dump offs underneath and to get good shots. Um, we went up strong. Like, it was encouraging to see Christian Comey going up with two hands and going up strong and finishing mm-hmm. plays, right, instead of, like, losing the ball. I felt like we were able to just out – dog right like we responded very very well to that rice game and i want to see us continue to carry that forward like we're not going to hit shots every game we're not going to we're going to miss bunny sometime but get back dive for loose balls rotate communicate play tough you know if it, if it's a foul don't give up an and one make them make free throws do stuff like that close out on three-point shooters and just play tough I and mean, you got to be tough mentally as well don't start slumping your shoulders and not getting back and just doing this stuff all the time. Nobody want to see that. Go play. Matter, you know, it doesn't matter if we hit shots or not. We want to win the game. We we still got a lot to play for. I know y'all were going, uh, um, uh, hopefully y'all got those numbers in front of you. Y'all can tell us uh, what's still at stake for us. Hey, uh, I just want to comment real quick on uh, the word response that Darian used because that was certainly a takeaway for me as well. I mean, UAB going this matchup was nine and four coming off a disappointing game in which they were an 11 and a half point favorite and they lost by whatever it was, 20 plus points. Um, And going on the road against a Tulane game or a Tulane team, uh, which is a high quality offense, you know, they're likely better than what their record indicates. They had, I think the the broadcast had said six guys averaging uh, double digit in scoring. Uh, so, I mean, they were a capable offense uh, for UAB to go into this ball game and to only allow Tulane to score a total of 67 points on their home court uh, is a big deal uh, for UAB to respond after that letdown performance against Rice is a big deal. And uh, it got me thinking during the game, uh, had UAB lost back-to-back games in conference this year, the answer is no. UAB has not lost back-to-back games in conference, which speaks to that resolve and that ability to respond. And uh, y'all know me, I started looking back and I'm thinking like, is that rare? Like, do do we have many seasons in which we have not lost back-to-back conference games? And I just went back to 2010 because it was a quick thought, but there's really only, uh, I think I counted three seasons in which UAB had not lost uh, two consecutive conference games most recently, it was the year in which UAB had made the NCAA tournament uh, under Andy Kennedy. Before that, there was a season in which UAB had the one seed in the regular season, uh, but ultimately did not win the conference tournament and went to the NIT to face BYU. And then the other time, the year in which I kind of did the cutoff was 2010, 2011, in which Mike Davis uh, took UAB to the NCAA tournament versus Clemson. So my point is that there's a lot of resolve and there's a lot of ability to respond by this UAB team. Uh, And despite some losses in which they were up 20 or up 10 and they lost those games on the road, um, you know, or in which they had to let down at home, they've continuous continuously responded, uh, which is a really good sign. And uh, also you mentioned the defense Darian uh, and AK talked about in the post game, but for UAB to hold Tulane again, that fully capable offense, only 32% shooting in the second half was key. And then one other note I didn't want to lose sight of was we talked about um, the bigs facilitating the ball to one another. 21 assists as a team, you know, tied a season high. I believe they said it was the third time it's happened this season. And um, Eric Gaines, five assists, zero turnovers. Uh, I thought that he played really well defensively. 
disrupting passing lanes, leading the, you know, good uh, opportunities for the UAB offense. So just wanted to kind of, again, go back to uh, despite UAB turning the ball over, whatever it was, I think it was like eight times in the first half, they limited the, they limited the turnovers for the most part in the second half outside of like a, a streak. I think it was like three out of four possessions, like under 10 where they turn it over. So for the large part in the second half, they did a much better job taking the ball or taking care of the ball. And specifically, I thought EG didn't force. He had a big shot late to help extend the on a drive, uh, you know, to help extend the lead. He didn't force anything, played good defense. And for those reasons, those certainly played a part in UAB getting this road win. Um, just quickly, do you have D.O. stats? Yeah, the, talking about Ortiz. Yeah, Ortiz, yeah. he went two for seven in 20 minutes there in, but – uh, he was able to connect on those two three pointers, and there was one that that he connected on out of a similar spot. But Butta got charged or got called for the charge, if you remember that. So really, that should have been three threes. Uh, and here's a stat that I thought you guys would find interesting: is while Daniel Ortiz on the floor, which was over 21 minutes, the team was plus 17. So he was plus 17, which led all people, including Yaks, who was at plus 16. So the UAB was very good scoring the ball with with DT in the court. I'm so glad that you uh went to that stat. I'm so glad that you went because what my, what the eyes were showing me was um sorry work on what the what the what what it was showing it won't stop. It won't stop. Okay. What the <laughs> what my eyes were showing me was Daniel Ortiz is what five eleven six foot. Yeah. So a lot of times and he's labeled as a shooter three-point shooter and a lot of times what, what happens is you get put in a box and people say if you're not hitting your shot you're unplayable but what i've been seeing about bo yes his shot has been struggling you can tell he's been searching for it but you have to make yourself useful and playable mm-hmm. while you find it that game I saw D.O. play. He's been doing this lately. He's been one of our best def- perimeter defenders. I remember looking at his film. I did not expect that from him. But he's found ways to make himself useful. He's been tough. He's been a leader. He was making good passes. And when the shots start falling, when it, when we know it, it will, and, it, and you say you connected on really three threes there, I don't – this team is on another level. He's a ceiling raiser, but he has established a very – playable and capable floor with his mm-hmm. defense and his energy and his way to stay in the game even though his shots went falling early in the year you couldn't say that i remember one game he was just forcing it it was i can't remember against who it was before memphis you know memphis he had a breakout game but ortiz was just forcing it and he was letting that shot affect his defense and it was like oh he's unplayable right now but just just to see him miss shots and say whatever i'm getting the ball back i'm gonna make a good pass and whenever I get a good another shot, I'm gonna let it fly again, and I'm gonna play defense. Like though, that plus minus really it kind of explains how he played, and I, and I really I really enjoyed that. Yes, definitely. I'm so glad you guys uh, mentioned that about Ortiz because though you know one of those two, and Jimmy kind of hit on it, like that was a huge three point shot that he made uh, to help UAB in this ball game. But I just kind of want to pick back up on you know Buddha's play um you know three of six from three uh 13 points five rebounds um and five assists um really good performance by Buddha as well um but Darren you know you kind of talk about this significance of this win uh for UAB over Tulane UAB sitting in good in a good spot you know at, we all know hey probably not going to get the one seed that lost against Rice probably not UAB out of it um, but you're still fighting for a two or a three seed and even a four seed. If UAB can get in that top four, they will not have to play in Fort Worth in the AAC conference tournament until Friday, which would be huge. Mm-hmm. You know, you would just need to go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, automatic berth in the NCAA if you can win three games in three days. So UAB sits right now uh, at fourth, uh, three and a half games back from South Florida. South Florida is probably going to win the league. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, we were kind of talking on the text thread, you know, they're ranked in the top 25 for the first time, but they're not, they don't have a legit shot at getting an at large into the uh, NCAA tournament, but they're probably going to win the league. Um, but UAB is only half a game back from second, you know, FAU and Charlotte um, are kind of two and three and UAB at the four. But things have opened up 
you know, to help UAB get in that top four spot, um, even though they lose to Rice. You know, SMU lost, uh, FAU lost to Memphis. So there is still a lot of game or a lot left to play for. And UAB has four games remaining. The other three just have three games remaining. Um, so UAB's got to take advantage of every single one of these opportunities. Now, um, this it starts this Wednesday, Wednesday night, um, as Wichita State comes to Bartow. Um, as we were, I was telling y'all before, UAB has never beaten Wichita State in basketball, 0 for 4. Now, they haven't played in like 15 years, but or, or however long it's been, but UAB has never beaten Wichita State. Now, this isn't the same <laughs> Wichita State of old, but they've still got some players on that team. But, guys, we talked about the Rice game. Before the ball was tipped, Barto was dead. There was mm-hmm. no energy. Darren, you spoke on the disappointment in the crowd capacity. Jimmy, we talked at the game. Like, this is just, it's not good. Guys, it all starts with us, with the UAB fans. Get your freaking butt to Barto Arena Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, and let's get this dub. And, I, and I'll push you one step further. Just like at Cahaba Brewery, we weren't really worried about how many people or whatever we were going to bring the energy. I hope that I was hoping that was something that Ransom taught us. Remember in the beginning where we were still kind of struggling with crowd attendance and then they popped up and it was kind of like, oh, the energy, the energy was different, right? It doesn't, okay, don't let who is not there or who's there, don't let it affect who what you bring, right? Mm-hmm. Because you don't know people's situation. Like for me, man, I got kids. I'm working, guys. I have, you know, I have, I, 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 for me, I support however I can. If I can go to the games, I can, but my family comes first. I have, you have to take care of your family first. But if you have time and if you, if you're a student, you don't have a reason. Like you can go to the, come on now. And when I was a student, I was, I was at every game because I enjoyed being there and I didn't care who was there. I'm going to dance. I'm going to cheer. I'm having fun. Have fun. Support the team. If you're there at the game like this, oh, you missed a free throw. Oh, oh God. Don't sit down, John. <laughs> John I love that down. voice, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why is this guy standing up? Like, like just go home. Just go. Right. What are you bringing? You're there, but you're not bringing anything. What's the point? Go to cheer on the team, please, or don't go at all. Bring good energy or so anything. Yeah, I mean, these are the kind of games, despite uh, Wichita State's uh, conference record of 3-12. and 12, I mean, Wichita State is a storied basketball program. Uh, despite them losing the other night, I think they had 7,000 people in attendance, despite being a 3-12 and 12 team in the AAC and having a first-year head coach and having a really tough season. They have people come out. So you look at their kind of home and, and away split. They're nine and five at home. They're one and eight on the road. So, you know, they're not going to be the same type of team when they come into an opposing arena. But when they come into an opposing arena, they need to be uh, coming into an environment which is a true home court advantage. And we've seen uh, Barto be that, whether it be the Memphis and the FAU games. And I personally thought that, you know, this was – um, the trajectory that we were seeing. Did I expect 7,000 people at every game the rest of the season uh, for UAB basketball? No, I did not. Did I have the expectation that we were going to be eclipsing 5K, having 5,500? I did. Uh, was that too high or low? That's up for debate. Um, but 37, 3,800 announced? That's trash. Um, uh, Rice at their last home game announced 3,800 people. <laughs> uh, so we don't we don't we don't play in that same like I don't know standings like we need to be uh, like some of the teams that we aspire to be uh, and you know we're not going to get 8,500 people there but I like what Darian said if you are going to show up don't let that impact you and I can be guilty of that sometimes I'll walk in and I try to walk in at the last second I'm like I can't sit there for that an hour and like watch warm-ups and I can't watch the arena fill up or sometimes not fill up. Like I got to walk in, like it's a national anthem, everybody's standing up and let's see what this is going to be about. But Darren brings up a good point is like, don't let other people steal your joy, you know, bring that same energy that you're yelling, you know, defense at Cahaba brewery, uh, bring it to Bartow arena too. You know what I'm saying? So 
but don't take any game. I want to say this. Don't take any game uh, or opponent for granted. Um, UAB has been very successful in the last few years. Every game in which we have Andy Kennedy at the helm is awesome. And every game in which we get to watch a guy like Yaks go out in the court and ball out and represent and have that either Birmingham or UAB in his jersey is an opportunity. And don't let these things, you know, in, in college and in college athletics today, don't let it slide by and just think, oh, well, next year when Yaks is back in AK and what we're going to be able to do next year, because next year may not happen. Neither of them might be back. Don't miss out. You got two games left at Bartow Arena against a Wichita State and against an SMU. All of these games matter. Show up, show out, support, and let's let's get one of those. The, the goal, right, is to get one of those double buys in the, the year. Definitely. And again, must win game for UAB uh, tomorrow night against Wichita State. Uh, a little programming note: uh, Patreon uh, supporters. So. The football schedule is set to release this Thursday. We are going to probably Friday, Thursday or Friday. Um, we're going to have a uh, Patreon bonus episode kind of going over our thoughts on how the schedule ends up being. Um, but again, patreon.com slash blazerpod. $5 a month gets you access to all exclusive episodes of the Blazer Victory podcast. Also in March... We are going to have a spring Q&A show so you guys can, you know, all our Patreon supporters can ask us any question um, in regards to, you know, football before they start spring practice here in a couple weeks. We want to go over that with you. So, again, if you are not a Patreon supporter, join today at patreon.com slash blazerpod is just five dollars a month or you can even join for a twit for a year at a 10 percent discount. So definitely take advantage of that while you can. And guys, do we have any other thoughts? Are we ready to wrap? Yeah, man. I forgot to mention how Big Jim tried to steal my wife. At <laughs> oh! <laughs> you gotta, you gotta watch him, man. You gotta watch yeah. him. I said I respect you. You did it right in my face. I, 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 I take that as a bad of other. But yeah, Big hey, Jim guys, don't play, man. Yeah. Big Jim don't play. But again, guys, be the energy. Don't let nobody affect your energy. Don't nobody. Don't let nobody take your joy. If it's just me, Jimmy, John there, guess what? I'm going to have an effing blast. Yeah. No matter what you do, no matter what, That's don't right. let nobody else dictate that. So do your That's thing, right. y'all. And I forgot to mention earlier, Big Jim's probably mad at me. YouTube, if you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe, Blazer Pod. We're growing. I think we're at 126 subscribers. Even if you don't, if you're if you're an audio only listener to Blazer Victory Podcast, we obviously that's where we started. That is our roots. But go ahead and go on YouTube and subscribe to us. It don't even matter if you watch us. Just go ahead and subscribe to us. Get your wife's phone or get your husband's phone. Go ahead and subscribe to Blazer Victory Podcast. Let's get these numbers up. Hit the like button. Uh, comment below. What do we want the listeners to comment? Ooh, what do we want? To- <laughs> what <laughs> hey, do we- you had. Hey, I don't. Hey, here, here, okay. Here, here. Here's what I want you to comment on. Tell us. We got four games left. What's your projection? UAB. How is UAB going to finish the year? Are we going four and zero, oh, three and one, two and two. What do Blazer fans think? Or hell, anybody that's listening to this podcast. What's your projections for rest of season? For UAB basketball. And what and what do you think that we need to do in order to get those wins, right? Mm-hmm. I want I want to know what y'all I want to know what y'all see on the court. So let us know is it JD post ups? Is it what is it defensively? You know, is it you know going bigger, going smaller? Let us know. Do we need we need more playmaking assistant like we did two lane? We had a good passing game. Is that it? Let us know, man. I, I really want to know what our listeners are seeing out there. Love it. All right, Jimmy, go ahead and send us out. Blazer Nation, just blaze.